uh, about five minutes into the pa passage and we've gone uh, about 20 feet. So the tricky part is we got to get through this narrow cut. Now this wind should should become much more uh, steady once we get clearer because it's all bouncing around Bull Island. Here we go. Well, I was going to put a quick tack in to get right under the lee of Bull Island. But the wind has gone all fickle on me again, so... I think I'll stay on this tack. Uh, now she's beginning to feel some breeze. Come on, baby, accelerate. All right, now let's put that quick tack in. Get as close as I can right under the lee of Bull Island and then shoot into the channel from there. Now, of course, something has to get tangled when I'm coming about in close quarters. Out on the open ocean, it doesn't tangle normally. Come on, baby, come around. And we're starting to get into some swell. That further complicates things because it makes it more difficult to get up speed when she's beginning to hobby horse. And the biggest danger when you're short tacking in very close quarters like this is that you might not have enough speed to get around on the next tack because you, you need some momentum to push the boat through the turn into the next tack and if she fails to come around then you're going to fall away on the same tack and you're going to need room to gather up some speed at which point you might be up on the shore Alright, it looks like I got some room on this tack now. Hey, and nothing tangled. Alright, we should be clear of Bull Island. I think my heart rate is now dropping below 200 beats per minute. So that's where we just tacked out of. It looks fairly wide, but I'll tell you, when you're trying to tack a, a loaded, full keel gaff rig boat through it, it's, it's uh, quite the experience. So you can see the green off to the right hand side of the picture. And in a moment you'll see the red. And now we are out of Hadley Harbor and into wider waters. Phew. It is Monday, the 24th of October, 2022. And we departed Hadley Harbor about an hour ago. And uh, kind of thrills and chills tacking out of there. I thought of leaving the outboard on and going outside and anchoring. Uh, but it was, uh, it was, uh, the choice was between the tricky business of tacking out through that very narrow entrance there, and as it turns out with a little bit of swell coming in, or um, the alternative was using the outboard to help myself get out and then anchor outside, but then I would have to take the outboard and bracket off when the boat wasn't completely still, which is kind of difficult because it's sort of awkward lifting that thing off. Uh, in any case, and then if you're trying to do that when the boat's rocking and rolling, that's even more difficult. So as it turns out, that turned out fine. Started off by getting my adrenaline up. 
So right now, uh, just a port here is the Elizabeth Island. So we're headed toward uh, Cuddyhunk, Pekingese Island, I think it's called, which is just north of Cuddyhunk. And uh, once we get past that, we got to get past the Sound Pigs, get west of the Sound Pigs. Uh, then we're gonna we're gonna hang a left here and start heading south southwest uh, toward the Chesapeake. Uh, the wind, there's actually quite a bit more wind than what was forecast. I mean, uh, weather models were showing uh, generally kind of six to eight knots. But uh, so far we've had uh, about 11 to 14 out of the northeast. I'm not complaining, we're making good time. Uh, the weather picture is, is decent for the next couple of days. We're going to have easterly winds. Um, I don't know if we're ever going to see the sun. It looks like it's going to be a lot of cloudy fog drizzle um, for a while here. Um, so I, I don't know uh, how, how, nice, how nice the days are going to be. But it looks like kind of light to moderate southeast becoming east. Um, you know, we might set the code zero there if it gets light. And, uh, but hopefully, it looks like we should have uh, enough wind to keep us moving along. Uh, as usual, uh, there's, there's no time to waste on these passages. Um, because uh, there's a low that's going to come off, it looks like around Georgia or so, it's going to come off a form off the Georgia coast and then track northeast, the usual story. But uh, the last models I looked at, uh, Friday afternoon to Friday night, uh, the winds are going to pick up out of the northeast, and it looks like to near gale force, about 4-7. So, uh, I'm hoping to, be, uh, hoping to be in the bay by Friday, so I can avoid that. Uh, it's a run of 350 miles. Today's Monday. That bad weather is on Friday. Um, so that gives, us, uh, that gives us three, four days. As long as we have good wind, we can do 350 miles in four days. You know, the plan is always on these passages is just keep the hammer down, keep her moving. Um, because uh, you don't want to dilly-dally. We're in late October now. And uh, you don't want to dilly-dally around the North Atlantic. Because uh, it, can, it, can, it can get bad. It can get nasty on you really fast. I didn't mean to interrupt your convention here, but... So that's not Pekingese Island, as I said earlier, it's Penikese Island. And then just behind it, under the foggy mist there, is Cuddyhunk. So once we get up here away, then so we're going to jibe over and uh, start heading on our course. Uh, we're about to say goodbye to Massachusetts here. That's Cotty Hunk. And uh, that buoy right through the tackle on the running backstay, that marks the western end of the sow and pigs. So that's really our last navigational hazard. Well, speaking of the need for speed. Wind is getting a little lighter, so I'm going to get this code zero rigged so we can keep this sled moving. One thing doing this in a calm harbor, it's another doing it at sea. 